Ladies and gentlemen, Damian Lillard is a Milwaukee Buck. I was out. I was running errands. I zoomed. Uh, I went the speed limit. I did not zoom home. I went the speed limit. Got home, and it is time to talk about it. If you've been living under a rock, I do want to show you the details. This is all one take, Kenny. If you do want to hear me talk more in depth about this, uh, I will be doing an episode on the Kenny Beach and podcast about it in a couple hours after I let these emotions fly and I think about it more logically. And also, we're doing an emergency episode of the Through the Wire podcast in a couple hours. So there's more content. There's more opinions. This is just the bite size. Oh my God, uh, video. So if you're under a rock, here is the details of the trade so Damian Lillard is a Milwaukee Buck the Blazers bring in Drew Holiday DeAndre Aiden Kamara I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that man's name right I don't even know if I've ever seen him play basketball a 2029 first round pick and some swaps and the Suns get Yusuf Nurkis Nazir Little Keon Johnson and Grayson Allen and then these pick swaps is a 2029 pick and then a swap in 2028 and 30 that is the details of the trade and this two-month saga of Damian Lillard is over with. There was rumors that the Trailblazers were very adamant about getting it done before media day, which is in a couple days, and here we are. I, I'm actually very surprised with this. If you were asking me which teams that I feel the most likelihood to pull off a Damian Lillard trade, obviously the Miami Heat would be number one on that list. But after that, because of the rumors from the Toronto Raptors over the last 48 hours or so, they were pretty high on the list. The Bucks were a team that I, I thought the fit would be there, but I didn't think the assets were there. And, and here we are. So I want to tackle this from every team's perspective. Again, give initial opinions and things are evolving. I, I'm going to change my opinion. That's just the way it is. The Bucks walk out of this feeling really, really good. Their star player, one of the top two, three players in all of basketball, Yance Dedekumpo, went on a nice media run where in multiple interviews, he expressed the idea that he is a champion. He wants to be a champion again. He is a winner. And though he loves Milwaukee, if he's not put in a position, if the team is not built in a position to win a championship, then he's willing to go win championships other places. He's eligible for his extension. He has not signed it. And he put pressure. He took a page out of Kobe Bryant's book. If y'all remember, Kobe Bryant did something very similar one offseason with the Lakers, saying that, hey, I want to be traded. He was this close to getting traded to the Bulls, and then it didn't happen. And then uh, they went on to trade for Pau Gasol, and a couple more championships came after that. Giannis, I believe in my heart that Giannis wants to be a buck for life, but this is a leverage play that said, hey, man, if you want to keep me in your market, you have to go make the adjustments. Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, Chris Middleton, these are all aging players. And though Damian Lillard is also 33 years old, we're talking about a top 10-ish player in the game of basketball. This is a match made in heaven. The picking... The... the <laughs> Let me regain my consciousness. I need to take a step back. The, pot the potential pick and roll with Damon Giannis, and Giannis is the role man where Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez is out there and just stretching the floor. Come on, man. This team, a team that just was the one seed, a team that just won a championship a few years ago, looks even more dangerous. Now, I'm not going to look past the fact that Drew Holiday is, by many people's opinions, the best perimeter defender in all of basketball, and he just lost that. And Damian Lillard, when you talk about the defensive side of the ball, you know that, that Drew is up here and Dame is down here in comparison. But, 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 but boy, that's all I'm saying. The offense is about to go to a whole new level, and yes, they will probably take a step back defensively, but they have a former defensive player of the year in Giannis and a a uh, guy that finished top three in DPO and Brooke Lopez, and though Brooke Lopez is about to be 36 years old, their defense should be still good enough where you look at this offensive jump and you're just saying, man, they did it. Now, these, these draft picks they gave up, it's not like no poo-poo thing. 2029 is 36 years from now, at least in NBA terms. You know how much the league can change in just two years? And we're talking about draft capital from, what, six years from now? This pick, these picks can be valuable. A pick swap in 2028. A pick swap in 2030. Who knows if Dame is still on the roster, if if Giannis is still on the roster. And I think that's the bet that the Portland Trailblazers are taking right now. Maybe this doesn't work out as much as the Bucks believe. And then Giannis still walks and so on and so forth. And, and having three years worth of Bucks picks if Giannis isn't there sounds valuable. Sure. Uh, maybe that's the side. But I'm just looking at the Bucks' perspective for, to have a superstar caliber player telling you that I need some help. And you go out there and go get a top 10-ish play. I'm going to keep saying top 10-ish. I, I, whatever. Top 10-ish player in basketball, this is beautiful. And you look past the fact that you gave up draft capital for, for somebody right now that's like a freshman in high school. I don't know. You look past that with the idea that we have one of the top players in ball and we just added another one of the top players in ball. What does the star lineup looks like? I, don't, I know I got four of them players. Who's the, who's the fifth player? Is it a Mo, uh, a Marjan Bochamp? Is it Pat Connaughton? Is it somebody like that? I don't know. 
but it don't really matter. <laughs> it don't really matter when you consider the rest of the pieces. Chris Middleton looked a lot better in the playoffs and, and towards the end of the season once he came back. Of course, Brooke was looking amazing, and Giannis is who Giannis is. This team, if we're talking about the odds of who's winning the Eastern Conference based on what I see right now in, in the, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics both made adjustments this offseason. The 76ers might make an adjustment soon with the James Harden stuff. The Bucks, in my opinion, as of right now, the couple minutes after this trade look like the favorite to win the Eastern Conference. Let's take a look at it from the Blazers' perspective. Now, in my opinion, when you're talking about potential Damian Lillard trades, I've always thought about the idea of trading your star caliber player, your superstar caliber player to get young players as draft capital in return, and they didn't get back young players. They didn't. I mentioned earlier um, Marjan Bochamp, and we don't know if he's going to be a really good NBA player. He looks solid so far in his career, but to not even get him in this trade is kind of weird to me. I will say I'm excited to watch Blazers basketball. Anytime a team blow blows it up or makes a superstar adjustment, I'm always interested in what it's going to look like. But Drew Holiday is a player that's probably not going to spend the rest of his contract there. Now, Drew Holiday also has said on record that he plans on retiring after this current contract, which I think is two years left. I would assume that he probably comes into the Blazers, plays for half of a season or so, and they use his production as a way to get more draft capital or a younger player. Uh, DeAndre Aiden is the most interesting piece of all of this trade for the Blazers, if you ask me, because he has the potential to stick on the roster. You trade away um, Yusuf Nurkic, so your center position is there. And DeAndre Aiden, being a former first overall pick, has not had has not been able to express to us his complete talent. Now, we're looking at the count of stats. It's like 18 and 11, night in, night out. But that 18 and 11 doesn't hold as much weight to some players that maybe are averaging less than that. I mean, the guys on the Through the Wire podcast is that our, our, our yearly ranking center's position, he wasn't a top 10 center in basketball. You look at his competition, and we know he could be. The one year where they went against the Pelicans in the playoffs, he was one of the main reasons they were able to get out of that series because he was dominant. And DeAndre Aiden is a player that has the potential to be dominant, but with the Suns, whether it be because of the front office, because of the coaching that was Monty Williams, or because of the relationship, whatever, whatever, he hasn't had the opportunity, or he has the opportunity, he hasn't been able to maximize that opportunity, and maybe a change of scenery is that. But he also is a player that was right after he got drafted, said, my goal is to get my next contract, my super max, my max contract, and he got that, and maybe he's just like, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? I got 37 M's in the bank every single year before taxes and stuff, so I, I feel good. But to have a change of scenery, you're looking at a team that's going to have Drew Holiday, School Henderson, Shaden Sharp, Anthony Simons. That's their guard core right now. That's just the guard core. Those, those are four players that you want to develop. And at least in these cases, Drew is just too good to not play, right? Uh, three players you're trying to develop. And then a veteran who, by all accounts, is a, a veteran's veteran. If I want somebody in my locker room that's going to teach my young guards how to play, how to be a professional, it's Drew Holiday. So there, there's the value there. Uh, I'm trying to talk myself into the... I don't love it for the Blazers. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't love it for the Blazers at the moment. But I'm trying to talk myself into it, right? Um, DeAndre Aiden and Jeremy Grant are making max contracts on the roster. And then you gave up Nazir Little, whatever. They have some things where, like, on the first day of the season, the first couple weeks of the season, I'm going to be watching intently because, of course, Scoot is really cool, really good. Drew Holly is really good. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. But I am... I'm just slightly, slightly confused. Now... Will I say this this trade pack is better than what the Miami Heat was offering? I believe so. I believe so as of right now. The Tyler Hero and first round picks, again, this it could have also been a three-teamer. It most likely would have been a three-teamer to make him go there. I would rather take Drew Holiday, who I could probably flip in six months, which I'm gonna I'm just gonna assume that Drew Holiday is getting traded to uh the Bulls <clears throat> eventually. Um even DeAndre Aiden is a player that could potentially get flipped. Now, if you look at every single team across the association, so many of them have the center that they trust. But you, ne you never really know. You never really know. But even if you don't trade him, DeAndre Aiden has the potential to show the world, hey, I was drafted over Luka, and here's why in the moment. Um, it, it was kind of crazy in the moment, too. Let's look at it from the Suns' perspective, because the Suns were a team that snuck into this. There's rumors over the last week or so that they were looking for a defensive-minded center to anchor it, and Yusuf Nurkic, and Yusuf Nurkic was the guy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pull up my, my tweets, because when I heard that, I was... Let's just say a little, maybe a little bit, a little bit confused on it. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. So here, here it is. Um, Vogel needs a defensive minded center to build his defense around, and Nurkic does fit that mode. And I said, I'm not sure if. Never mind. Now, since he had the horrific injury 
Yusuf Nurkic has not been the impactful defender that he had been previously. And, and even before that, it wasn't like he was a top three defender in basketball, but he was adequate to pretty damn good. And he has not been that recently. So, again, maybe I haven't watched him enough over the last year or so since so coming back. But if you're asking me who impacts the game more defensively between DeAndre Aiden and Yusuf Nurkic, I, I would say they're probably right here and here. And if anything, one person slightly higher than the other. It wasn't like, oh my God, now we got this defensive minded center Yusuf Nurkic and we can run it and go win a championship. Now, I'm not surprised in the sense that when you go back to the original trade, when, when I talked about them making a trade, and when I say them, I mean the Phoenix Suns, because again, I didn't think that DeAndre Aiden was going to play the, the, the entirety of his contract. I didn't think it was going to happen this fast, but I didn't think he's going to play the entirety of his contract. When I thought about what DeAndre Aiden could turn into, because of the contract that is associated with him, I knew that trading him for two for one makes a lot of sense for the Suns, a team that needs depth. And that's practically what they did. Honestly, they got three, three really rotational players for the price of DeAndre Aiden. If I'm looking at the Suns, though, again, and when you talk about just the optics of wanting an offensive minded center and them getting back use of Nurkic, that, that doesn't sit right. But if you're talking about DeAndre Aiden, whether he wanted to leave or for the front office thought it was best for them, getting a three for one because Grayson Allen it can play. You know what I'm saying? He's been wishy-washy in the playoffs here and there, but he, he can play. And he's a guy that you can expect on the playoff roster to be one of your top eight guys. Nazir Little has a lot of ups and downs. But you're talking about regular season. Nazir Little is a guy that could get regular season minutes. And so you, you traded away the big old contract that was DeAndre Aiden for multiple pieces. I see that as a dub. Do I love the fit of having Nurkic as the back end on this Suns team? Not, necess not necessarily, and hopefully uh, Yusuf Nurkic can prove me wrong yet again. Um, but again, the three for one is pr pretty interesting. It's pretty, pretty interesting. So if I was going to go out and grade this all, I feel like Drew Holiday was a player that was going to retire a buck, man. I'm beyond. After the win in the championship, it felt like he was a guy that was going to be just there. And... He will always get the love. Like, that first game back, he's going to get a tribute video. Uh, he, he's going to get a standing ovation. Like, that's going to happen. Um, the Bucks get, get, an, get an A because I'm wavering the risk because I have Giannis. You know what I'm saying? I'm wavering the risk because I have Giannis, and Giannis balances it all. And, and investing in Giannis, which is what you're doing right now, is worth, worth it even if it doesn't work out because that's how talented he is, right? The, the Blazers, man... Not getting any young pieces. I think DeAndre is 25. So I in, in the grand scheme of things, he's still a young player. But once you end up getting a max contract, I don't really look at you as young anymore. Young players, in my opinion, is typically a guy that's still on his rookie deal or something like that. For the Blazers, trading one of the two best players in your franchise history. I don't love it. But in 2029, it could look amazing. You know? In a couple months, it could look amazing if you flip Drew Holiday for what I believe his value could be for a contending team. Drew Holiday is... So, I, I don't need to sing praise about Drew Holiday. You know Drew Holiday. And if I'm the son, sneaking in and getting three rotational players for the price of one really big contract that the, the love had been lost between the organization and him feels like a dub. Again, these are just my initial reactions. The biggest loser in all of this is, of course, the Miami Heat. Um, Damian Lillard practically cried his way to Miami and did not get there. Um, a couple days ago, this another tweet came out and let, let me let me showcase this one. Um, another tweet came out that said the Miami Heat believe they could win the East with their current roster and will not act desperate for Damian Lillard. Well, um, could they win the East with their current roster? For sure. Yep. But their likelihood of doing that now because he went to one of the one of the teams that you were going to be competing with. Now, you did just beat them in the playoffs. Like, congratulations. But the fact that he went to a fake rival is a nail, undoubtedly. And when this tweet came out, um, I tweeted, without acquiring Dane this offseason was as bad as it can get. Now, I, from my, I did a bad part explaining what I mean because obviously the Miami Heat picked up Josh Richardson, who's a quality player, and back in Heat culture and so on and so forth. So it's not like they lost everything, though that they lost Max Struess and so on and so forth. What I really meant when I was tweeting that was saying, um, I'm not talking about talent gained or lost. I'm talking about having a team very close to the finish line and having a star that's showing you that he needs help. Having a top 10, there I go with the top 10-ish, player begging for you to trade for him and you're playing it too cool, uh, planning too cool, that would be a bad offseason. That's how I feel. 
Now, again, maybe the Trailblazers desperately did not want to talk to him based on just just having uh, not envy towards the Miami Heat, but just hating the fact that he was Damian Lillard was so adamant about going to the Heat. Maybe they're like, man, we don't even want to give you that opportunity. We don't like Tyler Hero as much as some other teams, or we don't like the two draft picks that you're giving. Because so I'm not saying that the Miami Heat didn't try, but based on some of the reports, it felt like they were playing it too cool. And, and maybe those reports aren't true. If they were playing it too cool, this is a huge L. But there's a world where they couldn't do anything. The Trailblazers may have valued Drew Holiday and DeAndre Aiden way more than those two first ones. You know what? They did. 100%. The other trade is better. The other trade is better. Because you can flip Drew for more and more and more having these two quality players, one of them an all-star, in exchange, or would I rather have Tyler Hero, who's a 20-point-per-game scorer and really solid, and two first-round picks from a team that I don't question the Miami Heat's future. They've been consistently good for 20 years. Now, I don't, those draft picks don't really mean much for them, but the Bucks, if Giannis leaves, then it's worth more. So I'm just saying if they were playing a two cool for school, this is a nail. But even if they weren't, this for the Eastern Conference alone, the teams that are towards the top, and the, the, the Milwaukee, I mean the, the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heats. Look at this train like, dang, that thing's got a little bit more <laughs> tough. And I'm looking at the spaces. Uh, I'm looking at the spaces on Twitter. And they're having a Blazers therapy session space. I kind of want to tune in. <laughs> I kind of want to tune in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I do this on the fly? I'm gonna try. I want to try to listen to what they're saying. And and just for a second, shout out to the Blazers community. I'm just very curious of what they believe is going on, how they feel about things with all of this. Because again, they just traded one of the best players in their franchise history. Um, and got back what they got back. And I can see people really hating this idea. All right, start listening. What if they uh, just start screaming? Let's see what we talk about. He went to Weber State. Uh, he's been in Portland for 11 years. He doesn't need okay. that side of the Bad idea. I think it was more of Portland. Like I said, Portland. I'm going to listen to this off cam, actually. I, I don't. I just don't know. I just don't know. Like, bad words. Things can happen. Things can happen. All right. Thank you so much. Let me know what you think about the trade. Uh, I will, again, through the wire podcast, Kenny Beach and podcast, dropping very soon with more and more thoughts about all of this. Uh, love y'all. See you soon. Peace. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out.